the first couple minutes of this are just doing test driven development to get the suit comparison functionality in place. There's not a lot more to it. I just kind of crank through. I've sped it all up because it took about an hour. So we don't want to have that. At this point, I'd like to call attention to lines 29 and 30. Here we have two different ways we can introduce the suit to a card object. One is passing it into the constructor, which is line 29. The other is a decorator at like line 30. This is two different ways I've debated doing in a number of other places or other projects. And for this one, I'm going to start with trying the decorator. I've used the constructor one a lot in other things. I want to see how the decorator version goes. Continuing with the decorator pattern for suit comparison, I'm going to start to need to compare what type they are. And with this, I can't use reflection or the type of operator because that is not something to do with objects. You don't know what your base type is or what types are. You deal with the interface or the abstract class. You don't interrogate the object and say, what are you really? That is very rude to the object. And for Steve, I love to anthropomorphize my objects. And what I found using the decorator pattern is that I couldn't compare cleanly. I had to switch gears and go back to the constructor path because, I mean, I've done that. I know it works. And I could see very large problems coming into play using the decorator pattern. So I didn't do good Git practices, so I couldn't actually just reset to my decision point. I had to actually delete. Those kind of decision points are great times to actually do a local commit. So if you squash them or do whatever else later, making a commit allows you to revert to that decision point quickly and cleanly. Um, that's a key point about when you find something wrong or where you find your current process or your current design is forcing you to break good practices to violate encapsulation, just turn back. Abandon it, it's better for the project. You can see that we've now gotten close to all of our comparisons in our rank higher than function. We're continuing to fine tune and tweak a little bit, but we'll get to micro objects. Look at this, this is not micro objects. Not at all. So, what we need to do, we need a suits comparing a door. Comparor. So, we could probably do a value. But then we can't use interface. So we're going to refactor this to a pub public i suit rank. Let's just call it suit rank ing er thing, which is an i suit ranking er thing. Oh, yeah, I'm calling it i suit ranking or thing. Deal with it. All right, new same suit ranking or thing. This is going to end up being a chain, a, a chain of command or a chain of responsibility. Um, and doing those, not chaining initially, gets to be a pain in the ass, honestly. Um, done it a lot on UWP. Our almost our entire foundation of our app is built around chain of responsibilities. We call them actions. So in this case, we're ranking. As our action. So I'm going to use the style we've done there. We're going to implement a class that is our suit ranker thingy. And part of this is it's going to help me think it through. So we are doing our, we're not going to do our same suit. We're going to start at the bottom of our chain. This is our is heart ranking thing. So here we're going to do return new is heart ranker thing dot rank is higher this other. Well, that's that's pass. It's other heart ranking or -er thing. Um, unfortunate side effect. If others equal to heart, now we look at this and go, this is where our chain falls into place. So if our challenger, we can't just return, can't just return the value. We need we need to continue the step. So do we? Yeah, we. But what do we do? Um, the solution is to move this guy in here. And because it is not our decision, we continue to pass along the champion and the challenger. Now just return that. See? See? So we have tests. 
Screw that up. Ta-da! All our tests don't pass. Now, this, this is an order dependency. Right now, our suit knows the order of how things are compared. That's not the suit's responsibility. I mean, you can see we're going to continue this all the way through. That's not the suit's responsibility at all. So, let's make a class. That is our suit ranking thing. So, this is going... This is going to look a little weird. I'm going to use some words. Um, if you haven't read Elegant Objects, what I'm going to say may not make a lot of sense. Probably won't make any sense anyways. Anyway, so we are going to actually have an empty constructor. What this is going to do is this is going to build our chain of responsibility. This class's sole responsibility is understanding how to build our chain. That's what it does. That, that's how, what it knows how to do. So here, we're going to do a new suit ranker thingy, which takes in these guys. Let's go ahead and uh, create a constructor for it. That takes in our is other thingy and our suit ranking thingy. Awesome. And here its response is suit ranker thingy dot is higher. So we just this is just functionally a pass through, but its responsibility, its single responsibility, is initializing our news. It knows the order. Its single responsibility is the order here. So we don't want them here. We just said that its responsibility is the order. Let's move it in. Tests are all still passing. Complexity is down to six. Excellent. So one of the things uh, I like to point out is here. Here we have a constructor that takes an I suit rank or ring thing. We don't hear this. Is this heart rank or ring? Is this heart knows it's at the end of the chain? It should it should know that. If we change this so that uh, if a spade compares against a spade, it's higher. Which, you know, sure, why not? Let's see what happens. Um, then this is wrong. That's not correct. So what uh, I do is inside our suit rankering thingy, we have a no-op class. It doesn't do anything. It turns false. That's all it does. And now that allows us to give our class here no knowledge it allows us to take knowledge out of this class and ensure that it does one thing it just does its one thing it doesn't know who it gets it doesn't know what the order is if our champion is a heart we return false otherwise we return you know false but it doesn't know that this class it doesn't care where we rearrange it. if we want to change the order of our ranking so hearts are suddenly our trump card right then this class wouldn't have worked. We would have had to modify it, not because its functionality changed, but because its place in the order changed. Because we moved it from here to here, it we have to change down here. No, that that doesn't make sense. That is having to change two classes for one reason. That is not encapsulating behavior. I'm sure there are many in the field who can speak better to this than I can. But we want our classes in our chain of responsibility to be agnostic to the place in the chain of responsibility. It deals with one thing. All this one does is this heart rankering thing. I could say it's champion heart. Hmm. It's one job. All it does, its single responsibility, is to see if the champion is a heart. That's it. That's all it does. Its entire purpose of existence is checking that. That's all it does. That's it. Done. Complete. Okay. So now that we have all of this in place, we can continue. We have a diamond. And one of the things, I'm, you, you see that I broke these apart. I'm expecting something. Let's see if it evolve, emerges because I'm expecting it to. So we are going to do not heart now, but is this diamond. So we're just changing this guy right here. So is champion. Um, we're also going to have an eye suit. So for this, we're going to do a new is champion suit rankering thingy. And it's going to take a, what is that, diamond? Now this is one of the many, many, many items that I actually have a few ways I like to do this um, none stick out as the best so I would do the next I, I would do the um, challenger uh, slightly differently so there's our champion a diamond all their tests are still green so here I'm passing it in I'm, I'm saying is our champion here to take this suit which means the suit ranking or thing get a little more touchy, but because I could do, I mean, still would have to do a diamond. Yeah, I just 
So here, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I will, I will do other this way. We have an abstract class. Um, so this is just a different way of implementing roughly the same thing. Uh, I currently don't have a preference on which one. I feel this is better because if we want to change uh, the ordering here, there, there's going to be way too much inclination to copy and paste this, move it up, and copy and paste this down. I feel that this this class's responsibility grows beyond the scope of order when it then has to know how to construct this guy. And it's that knowing how to construct that really eats at me when I'm doing micro objects. It, it, it's doing too much. It's not this class's responsibility is knowing up the chain of, in this case, suit ranking. That's its responsibility. Not knowing, it doesn't know about suits. It knows the order of classes necessary. That's what it does. And now I've uh, convinced myself that this is not acceptable. I don't like this. Which is awesome because I've been, it's one of the, these are, this is two ways that I have been playing around with this. Um, I think it's really the only two ways. I have a third, but it tends to be, um, which I was doing early in here where I'd have suit as a static reference. So I'd have a class that, uh, let's see, like, well, I mean, it would be like this, but I, I would have a static. I could just hold it up here or something and, but yeah, one. Oh my God, it's a static inline. Ah, uh, horrible. Um, I'm, I'm more inclined to do this. Yeah, so if it's the matching suit, it returns true. The question is, does this get us a lot? Because this knows how to compare. This knows what to compare. Its single responsibility is knowing that the matching suit is a diamond. That's all it knows. All right. That's an interesting thought I'm having about... Yeah, we could keep abstracting this. I could create a method that selected either the challenger or the champion based on the type, and then so level after level of abstraction. I don't think it's gaining anything to do that. It, it's hiding behavior. Here, we are the matching suit. All right. Hmm. We have... The same code here. Am I being too clever? It is selected. Let's try this. Let's see what I just want to see what happens. So this guy knows we're to select the uh, challenger or the champion. That's all it does. That's it. Which makes sense. This guy, all he knows how to do is to compare the champion or challenger to the matching suit. And it returns true. The other one is uh, returns false. Uh, I, no, 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 no. Look at this. Look at, look at this. Who the hell knows what's going on here? Nobody. Nobody knows what's happening. The moment we have to change this, ugh. That is not going to be pretty at all. I, I'm, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. I don't think that is at all a worthwhile thing to be doing. I don't like this. I don't I don't like the overrides at all. Compares to heart. That's what it knows how to do. That's it. That's all it knows how to do. We'll rename this to uh, Challenger and this to Champion. I see the similarity in the code, but duplication is not similar code. Duplication is code that changes for the same reason i haven't seen these need to change for the same reason i am copying and pasting the crap out of them which very much very much indicative of things to keep an eye on it smells don't get me wrong I'm not convinced i'm not i i don't know that it's a duplicate And because I don't know it's duplicate, I'm not going to do it duplicate. First, let's go ahead and shift these out. So, here we're going 
to get our challenger ranking, our champion ranking for diamonds, and then again for hearts. And as we complete this, we will need it for clubs. So let's go ahead and just do another copy and paste, which is a huge sign that you need to uh, refactor and combine things. But as we saw with this, it's not a lot of gain. Uh, we have duplicate looking code, but there is no indication that if it changes, we need to change everything. So until we have a better understanding of the evolution of the entire system, we don't want to actually combine these. I suspect they will in the end, but it's not that bad to hold them out. I do feel a little bad having what is this, six classes where I could do one by just adding the type in. So I feel I need to go back on my original. <laughs> I need to go back on what I was saying before and actually use, uh, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, because we have a relationship in, in, of going into this. Eh, it feels better than six classes. So, yeah, this is part of what I do. I will go back and forth on things and try to figure out uh, what feels right. What the code tells me. So we will then have, uh, this is diamond? No, club. Downside here is we end up with a uh, club called out twice here. And over here, we can see we got a little bit. Uh, there we go. Uh, that's going to change. I'm okay with that. We are still all green. For the rest of this, I'm continuing to refactor the suit ranking process into its final form, which is available on GitHub through a link on the blog. I go back and forth a lot on how to implement the suit ranking class the one that builds the chain is the suit passed in is it part of the class i think i went back and forth and implemented it each way a couple of times in the end i settled on the suit being in the class doing the comparison i think it encapsulates the information and behavior better the class names come out saying exactly what the class is doing no questions and any reordering is just reordering the the newing of the object, not both a newing and a type, or a suit in this case. As I've learned, duplication isn't identical code. Duplication is when you have to change two different pieces of code for the same reason. Until I get in and have to actually modify two of these classes for the same reason, then maybe. It's not guaranteed, but maybe. Early abstraction, I've found, complicates the system. Don't add the layers of abstraction that you don't need. It's going to make the code clever, and clever code is bad code. It's hard to maintain. The next piece I go on to implement is the comparison of the value of the card. I'm not showing the detailed process for this in a slow form. It's all in here sped up. I don't really type this fast, fortunately. It's the implementation is almost identical to what I did for the suits themselves. The, the process is the same and what the comparison function started to look like is identical. I, I get through a couple of them, a, a couple of rank comparisons and then jump straight into implementing the chain because I see where it's going. I'm gonna take the obvious implementation or the obvious, you know, the obvious implementation step, go I know I'm going to do this in chain because I have a hierarchy of decisions to be made. Once I get, and this is uh, all going through the same TDD process, nothing new, nothing fancy. I hit each one of them up and implement and go through. I do add a like kind of a, a integration test. It's not really an integration test, but it's not testing a single unit. I have it go through and test every permutation of suits. I, I have that one. I do that for my ranks as well. I do some refactoring of names, and then I will 
get into pulling out all the classes into their own folders and namespaces so that they are organized better. One of the things I found with object-oriented programming and micro-objects as well is that there tends to be a class explosion and that can create some naming and namespacing extension. They get kind of long. This will go away or be mitigated largely when multiple projects use the same kind of foundational classes and the same patterns as those can be extracted into libraries to be consumed by each project so that they don't have that same explosion of foundational classes. The main part of this video was really demonstrating how to do a temporal flow of decisions and make them into the chain of responsibility pattern. It's not a forced pattern, it is a pattern that literally pops into existence when you're attempting to take single responsibility to the extreme, which is what the core of micro objects are. It is single responsibility taken to the extreme. In this instance, with the suit and rank comparisons, we are taking our temporal flow of checking if something is greater than another thing and putting those into individual classes, individual tiny micro classes. And this is why I call them micro objects. Thank you very much for watching. And in the next iteration, we will see what we can do about being able to have a hand of cards. Thank you.